Ceramics made its first appearance in Malaysia during the Neolithic age. They were first used as basic utensils for everyday use, but over time, decorative features were added to them and they became decorative items. So, ceramics are primarily made out of clay, which has to undergo a few stages of processing, which include the first one, kneading, followed by shaping, and then smoking or drying, and finally firing. So, the most well-known ceramics are produced in three places in Malaysia, which are Sayong, Perak, Mambong, Kelantan, and finally Sarawak. So, the ceramics from Sayong, Perak are called Labu Sayong, and they are usually used as a water receptacle. And sometimes, for decorative purposes, they are adorned with a dark hue. And for the ceramics from Mambong, Kelantan, they often have reddish tones in their clay and are used as cooking utensils. And finally, as for the ceramics from Sarawak, they are usually ceramic bases and they usually have native patterns in them. So the first type of ceramic we're going to talk about is Labu Sayung from Fera, which I'm going to pass to Wendy. Hello! So Wendy, can you tell us more about Labu Sayung? Sure, thank you. This are Labu Sayong and made in Kampong Kepala Pentang Sayong. The clay used to produce Labu Sayong is taken from nearby areas such as riverbeds and paddy fields. The shape of the Labu Sayong is inspired by old girls while its decoration is adapted from surrounding environments. Here are some of the motif Labu Sayong. The first one is Bukut Rebung, second one is Susu Kelapa, the third one is Bunga Chaka Ayam, and the fourth one is Bunga Tanjong. to the making process of Labu Sayong. Labu is going to explain to us. Yes, so uh, the making of Labu Sayong involves various processes, starting with gathering soft clay from the riverbanks. The clay will then be dried, molded using thumb and forefinger. Uh, lastly, it will be decorated using motifs and then fire. So here we have Pasu from the Iban and then Kuron from the Kadazan. So now I will pass to Jen to talk about the other produce. So here is the Indian pottery. Here's an example. And last but not least, we have the Tempuli pottery. Tempuli pottery is made in the Kampung Basit Durian, which is located in the uh, Jaraduk Baha. So here is the product. Include water containers, pots, um, the drinking vessels, glasses, and many others. These potteries are uh, used for cooking, storing water, and decoration. The clay is uh, brownish yellow and is loose. The unique quality of the tabouleh pottery is its fine clay. And the motifs um, used for decorating the surface of the pottery, uh, such as the bunga kolompa, bunga trampa, and the bunga tapis. So I will wrap this up and pour to the party. Hey Kim! I heard some of my friends that there are many interesting traditional clubs in Malaysia. Yeah, actually, uh, have you Googled any of it? Actually, there are many famous and interesting traditional clubs in Malaysia. Yeah, I Googled last night. Uh, there was something about it. Yeah, we can have a look at the uncle, the drawing, and all that. Let's go. The first one is color dyeing, yeah. and then after that, we'll do waxing. You can take one, two, three, four, so you can see. Which part you want to see? The light color, you must do water. Dark color, no water. Only. After that, you take some brush for the water. You must blend slowly, push outside. Now you can see tone, dark from here, light from here. And if it's a little bit more darker, you just put the red color. Just like that. Well, 
it's a good experience. Yeah, I hope you enjoy the painting process. Yeah. So now let's come to weaving. This is one of the types of weaving known as Ninak Badui weaving, which is originated from Orang Asti from the jungle of Pahang. But this is also known as the traditional craft of the Malays because it's famous. It's a famous craft that the Malays does. Usually this craft they will have a type of mat which is known as the elephant footprint mat where they use during treating session where people sit on it and they treat with the six sick people. These are the mengkuang leaf from Tasik Baru Pahang. Moving on, this is the kawasan fire of where you can find mengkuang leaf as well. Usually people will use parang to cut down the mengkuang leaf and use it for weaving. These are the different types of traditional crafts done by the Malays with by using weaving weaving tools. For example, bag alam, baku, the topi. So now for more types of weaving, I'll pass it on to Yan Qing. Yan Qing will tell us more about different types of weaving. For Kerban Gila weaving, Kerban Gila is a multi-purpose container or basket that is made by the Ora Asli Jakun community of Baha. The technique they use is also called Kerban Gila and it's so in intricate that, uh, that few weavers are capable of producing it. The uniqueness of Kerban Gila can be seen from its patterns as well as its points which are very difficult to make. Stem batik. These are amongst the better known batik forms in Malaysia. Pieces of wooden blocks are being, with embossed patterns are stamped on the fabric using natural based black pigment. The designs are, are fixed and applied repeatedly using one or two colors. This technique is capable of, pro capable of producing high quality designs and intricate patterns. Today, Hand printed batik are being are still being manufactured in states such as Trunganu and Kelantan, while many other producers around Malaysia are still making sarongs. Some have diversified in making yardage for home furnishing. Other than that, the type of cloth has also been diversified from cotton to various types of fabrics such as silk and organza.